Hi, I'm Claire from Wild Ginger Running and I've teamed up with Bridgedale to bring you my five steps to your first trail marathon, including what to wear, what to eat, and my 12 week training plan for runners going from the half marathon distance to that marathon distance on trails. Step one, pick your race. So trail races tend to be less precise on the distances than road races. So where a road marathon would be bob on 26.2 miles, a trail marathon could be anywhere between 26 and 28 miles, with those couple of extra miles considered more race for your money. 50K, 30 miles, is also a really popular distance and this training plan will work for that event too. So for your first marathon on trails, look for a race that's not too extreme in terms of terrain and hills with a generous cutoff time to take the pressure off. Look at SI entries and find a race they have lots of great trail events listed and you can filter them via location date and distance as well I use them a lot they're really handy also check out the wild ginger running recommended races playlist here for my favorites too step two get the gear so if you're considering a trail marathon you've probably already done a fair bit of trail running see my five steps to your first trail half marathon here if not so you've probably got some grippy trail running shoes and a running pack so heading possibly now into more remote hill and mountain sides, it's time to invest in a lightweight waterproof jacket to keep you warm and protected from that changeable British weather. We all know you can start off in glorious sunshine and then experience four seasons in one day during the five to seven hours that it might take you to do a trail marathon or a 50K. So see my gear test playlist here for my waterproof review and more recommended race kit. Top tip, wear everything well before race day to prevent chafing and blisters. The only exception to this is socks. So once you know which ones work for you, treat yourself to a fresh new pair for race day. My favorites are Bridgedale, they're so comfy. Check out their new range of trail running socks. There's a link in the film description below. Step three, it's time to start training. Find out as much as you can about the course so that you can train accordingly. So if it's along a canal towpath, train on flat trails and vice versa if it's gonna be very hilly or very rocky. If you don't live close to trails like the ones on your race, actively seek out rough, muddy and rocky ground for your training runs. You might have to get a little bit creative here. So run on the grass verges or gravel next to the tarmac paths or take in just any small patches of woodland and farm fields that you can see on your runs. To have a good time on your first trail marathon, I recommend running three times a week and doing one cross training session rather than a fourth run and some regular strength work. So try this easy 12 week plan. First, the running part. Every week do one 60 minute steady run, one 60 minute hill interval session, and one long run at the weekend at an easy chatting pace. So I'll go through all these runs in more detail now. Firstly, the steady 60 minute run. So in the middle of this run, give your fast twitch muscles a boost by doing six strides, where you run really fast for 15 seconds, then jog for a minute to recover. This stops you always just plodding along and gives you a speed boost without overly taxing your heart and lungs. Now for the 60 minute hill interval session. So warm up for 10 minutes with easy jogging to the bottom of a runnable incline and there do a few mobilization exercises like the one in this film here. So once you're warm, you're gonna do a pyramid session where you sprint up the hill and then jog back to the start for first 30 seconds, then 60 seconds, then 90, then 120, then back to 90, then 60, then 30, that's your pyramid. Take a five minute break, do a walk, have a drink, then repeat that pyramid session for a total of 14 minutes of hard effort for that whole session. That's a tough session. Now for your long run. Start with two hours and add 10 minutes each week over the 12 weeks leading up to the race so that come race day, you can comfortably run for around three and a half to four hours without stopping. Every four weeks, now this is really important, give your body a chance to recover and rebuild stronger by having an easy week. So drop that long run back down to two hours and swap the hill interval session for a 30 minute steady run followed by 30 minutes of yoga or stretching. If the trail marathon takes you longer than four hours on the day, don't worry. The adrenaline and excitement of the race will carry you to the finish line. Try to include as much uneven trail terrain and hills as you can in every run. You might have to get creative if you live in a flat built up area by running on grass or gravel verges and using reps on bridges and subways as hills. 
If you can, travel once a month to do your long run on trail similar to your race, exploring country parks, forests and mountains. Now for the fourth session of exercise, do cross training rather than a fourth run. A 30 to 45 minute swim or an hour's dance or aerobics or spinning class or a two to three hour bike ride will give you that extra cardiovascular workout without putting the same impact strain through your joints. It's also really good for your brain to vary the exercise so you won't get bored. Now for the strength work. So to get stronger, faster and recover quicker, I also highly recommend doing a total of 60 minutes strength and stretching work every single week. This doesn't have to all be done in one go and you don't have to use weights or go to a gym. See my exercises playlist here for some great 10 minute workouts and some even shorter time saving moves to do every time you boil the kettle, stand in a queue or watch TV. Number four, eat right. Eat plenty of healthy food, including lots of different vegetables rather than too many processed foods with a high fat and or high sugar content. And the evening before the marathon, eat a nutritious and filling meal like corn and chicken or fish with rice and lots of green vegetables. Then have a really easily digestible, slow energy releasing breakfast like porridge with raisins and honey a couple of hours before the start. Your muscles can go for around 90 minutes before they need replenishing with fresh carbs, so take a few easily digestible sugary snacks to eat during the race. So to get scientific, 30 to 60 grams of carbs per hour is advised, but in reality, if you just eat a couple of jelly babies, a bite of flapjack or a mouthful of gel every half hour, you'll have plenty of energy. Some people find it hard to eat certain things or at all on the move, so test out your snacks during your training run so that you don't get an upset stomach on race day, including any food that you know will be at the checkpoints. If you can't eat at all, try adding energy powder to your water or a teaspoon of sugar to 500 milliliters of squash for a DIY option. Drink small sips often to thirst and your pee should be the color of pale straw. And then once over the finish line, drinking a pint of water before any celebratory alcohol is a really good idea. And for a quicker recovery, have that salty protein and carb rich snack like a chicken or tuna or avocado and hummus sandwich and a packet of salty crisps within 30 minutes to two hours after finishing. Take a look at my nutrition playlist here for more healthy breakfast, meals and snack ideas. Number five, ace race day. So check that you have any mandatory kit that the race organizer requests well ahead of time and then pack your bag and lay out all your kit the night before, putting a picture of it on social media for some kudos and support from your friends. Check the event location, parking and registration details and leave in plenty of time so that you're not rushing. The biggest piece of advice I've heard time and time again from all the trail running pros is to start slower than you think, to pace yourself. It's okay to power walk up the hills, especially the steep ones, and make sure you appreciate that spectacular scenery. Enjoy yourself, take photos, say hi to other runners, thank the marshals, and just smile as you cross the finish line and congratulate yourself on a great trail marathon. So for loads more advice on training, gear, nutrition, and more, consider my book, The Ultimate Trail Running Handbook, which will get you fit and confident and skilled up to go from 5K to 50K off-road. The link is in the description below. And for even more comfort on your first trail marathon, use a pair of socks from Bridgedale's new trail running range. The links are in the film description below. Subscribe to Wild Ginger Running for more trail and ultra running advice, interviews, inspiration and enjoy your first trail marathon. Tell me how it went in the comments below and I'll see you on the trails.